Uh, so we've got the REM pod now going off just on one side. Nothing from EMF. So just uh, one light on the on the REM pod. <laughs> Well, hello YouTube, and uh, welcome on our first investigation, paranormal investigation, I may add, uh, in West Dorset today. Today we've got uh, Baz and Lee. It's December, it's cold, there's a northerly wind. Um, we've wrapped up as much as we can. Uh, the location that we're going to today, to my knowledge, has never been investigated. Uh, it may be because it's a little bit off the beaten track. It's uh, it's actually on a uh, unclassified county road. Uh, a normal car would have difficulty in accessing down here because there is some quite deep ruts and there's quite a bit of mud about. Um, it's hidden in the woods so we've got to negotiate in the dark with muddy footpaths and streams and so that's going to be hard enough as it is uh, but we're really really oh yeah there's streams yeah uh, so it's going to be a really really interesting investigation the fact that it's to my knowledge never been investigated uh, is going to lend a certain air of mystery to it and I can't wait to show you the site uh, when we get there so I'll catch up with you in a minute we've uh, reached the entrance to the woods a um, lot of pheasant activity going on in there and uh, so we've got just enough light left to hopefully navigate our way through the woods. It's uh, certainly got darker in the woods now and the problem is it's difficult to see where we're going. We're still making our way through the woods. Um, it's a classic um, spooky woods with pheasants and owls cracking of uh, branches as you're walking along and uh, yeah I think we're gonna be in for a good night I don't know about the rest of you but I'm beginning to feel a bit of an atmosphere already but could be just because we're in a dark spooky woods but um, it's uh, certainly Certainly something feels away. It's certainly a long trek. And especially when you've got um yeah, my is gone. little oh no. Well, that was fully charged, so no. Yeah. Oh dear. I charged this up earlier. That was on a full charge, man. It's not if I hold it, so. Oh, it might be just the button then. It's uh, hadn't probably been used for a while, I expect. Yeah, it's actually quite hard going, and um. There is some trees down over the original pathway here at the moment, so through little diversions. And we have made it. St Luke's Chapel, or the remains of, should I say. I always find it intriguing to see what offerings have been left on the um, on the altar. Gives you an idea of who may have been down here recently.
There is. So there's. That's like a dream catcher there, isn't it? Yeah. The bee, that looks very pretty, that. Some effort's gone into that. There is. I can't see that one, but I don't really want to disturb it. No, no. No, we come in total respect. Some coins left there. In the camera. That's good. Yeah, that's that's excellent. Some shells. Crystal. Look. Yep. So I want to say, yeah, there's a crystal there. there. Some quartz. Does look like quartz. Yeah. So just a little bit about this place. Um, so it's called St Luke's Chapel. It's on the Ashley Chase in West Dorset. Um, it was founded uh, by Cistercian monks in the 1200s. Uh, the landowner gave the Cistercian monks the land in return for constant prayer. Uh, I believe that the um, a village called Sturt um, formed around here. It was just beginning to rain, um, which was mainly monks. And in the 1500s, uh, the Refor Reformation, um, it was deserted. Until the builders of Ashley uh, House, uh, which is Lady Olga and David Watson, um, fell in love with the place. They tidied it up. Uh, they made good what was left here. And then obviously when they died, they wished for their remains to be buried here. Uh, the fact that it is so remote, I thought, lent itself um, for further in investigation, as there was the village of Sturt, which nobody really knows too much about. But all I do know is it's lumps and bumps in the ground from the back of me, and um, a lot of monks lived here. So it's going to be interesting to see how this pans out tonight. Olga, it was Olga, yeah. Olga. Yeah, David and Olga Watson. 1870 to 1952, builders of um, Ashley Chase House. I know in the past somebody sometimes little trinkets are left on these shelves here. Oh yes. Oh. What's that, nine months, the poor baby? Yeah. Here's her head up there, look. I don't know if um, the actual remains are actually under here, or these are just the headstones. There's no reason to say that they shouldn't be here. Right, I think we will now begin to start our investigation here. Uh, okay, I've placed a device um, on the wall there. Um, it won't hurt, but what it will do, it will sense um, if you're near it. And we'd be really grateful if you could perhaps just walk up to it and see if you can make it beep for us.
I'm not wanting you to be a circus act, but we were just trying to get a better understanding of perhaps the afterlife and why this is such a beautiful and peaceful place. Right, so we're getting activity on SLS and we're getting activity on electric field and magnetic field. It's coming and going. That, that field meter goes from zero sometimes. There we are, look. There's no electricity here. We're in the middle of a woods. There's no overhead power lines. Nobody's got any transmitters on them. And Lee's now just picked up some on SLS. And there we are to back it up. Okay. Yep, I saw that figure then. Thank you, you can come closer. We're not here to hurt you. We're not here to harm you. We're here to share the beauty and the peace and tranquility of this place. Wow. Look, that actually says bad. That actually means that it's so high that it's bad for your health, if that was at home. Oh, really? Mm. Right. Um, should I try some um, EVPs? Yeah. Right, this is getting a bit weird. Um, the EMF keeps on going off in a specific place. I've tested the EMF against Lee's headlight, his hand torch and his phone to make sure it's not picking anything up from there. Um, I haven't got anything on apart from this phone. And for some reason this area, it keeps on giving us a reading, but it's spiking up high. There, there's no electricity around it, there's no overhead cables. And yet that EMF meter is giving us readings, and they're high readings. You can see I've just got it propped up just on a branch there. And it goes from zero, and then it spikes up. And Lee was mapping a figure on the SLS here earlier. So, but I must say, there's a feeling of peace and calm here. It does not feel spooky, although it's the archetypal spooky place, but it's not, it's warm. It's freezing cold out on the lane, but here it's warm in the trees. Little bit of rain. You mapping anything, Lee? No, I think popped up there, yeah. We did notice there are a couple of trinkets hung on this tree. A couple of offerings there and there. I'm not sure what if that shape there has any particular significance. It may not have absolutely anything, but um, but it is in this tree where these are hung. There's the EMF meter that we were getting these spikes, and it is peculiar. So this one I really can't explain. You can see, just shut itself off. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we've just put a REM pod down and straight away it went off. So this was the this is just um on the ground below where the EMF meter was. Um with the greatest respect, do you think you could touch this device again down here? It makes a sound. Just go up to it and just touch it or stand really close to it, put your hand on it. Now we've all agreed that it is feeling really, really calm here. I cannot deny that it's just got a lovely feeling of peace. It is not in the slightest bit spooky, but um, I think we sort of knew that before we came. But what we were hoping is we could get some nice, settled and happy spirits to come to say hello. But um, nothing on the REM pod. Now it's settled down. Absolutely nothing. Which, actually, Lee, I'm pleased about in a way, because we know it's just not going to set off, yeah. you know, just randomly. I'm just going to see how close I need to get to it for it to set off. Now it's settled itself. <clears throat> so, what's that, about three inches away? About three inches, yeah. yeah. What's up, man? Yeah, talk to Thank you for um, giving us that information. <laughs> but is it possible you could just make that REM pod, that device there, the black thing on the ground, make a noise again? We're trying to understand if you're trying to communicate with us or you're just having a play with the toys, which is absolutely fine if you want to. But can you do it again? The weird thing is that um, this REM pod was just going off with one light constantly for about 10 minutes. Um, we then put the EMF next to it and got absolutely nothing at all on the EMF. Nothing whatsoever. We moved the REM pod. All four lights came on. Um, then they were on, off, on, off, then stayed on and now completely flat again. Um, like I say, there's nothing threatening here, um, but this, we are beginning to get a few little bits of interesting footage now. And I do apologise um, the quality of video here, <laughs> but it's not very good at low light. One day we will get ourselves some decent infrared cameras. We just put the REM pod and the EMF meter on the uh, on the altar, and uh, absolutely nothing at all. Not a peep out of either one of them, um, which is strange. Why it just seems to be over in that area where Lee is now. It's um, it's the only area that appears to have any activity here. I did have a little walk up into the woods earlier and um, yeah, nothing at all, absolutely nothing. A little bit of rain coming down again, but it is warm down here. And I say warm, it's a lot warmer than what it is on the main track. Uh, so we've got the REM pod now going off just on one side, nothing from EMF. So just uh, one light on the on the REM pod. It was just after Lee said that he was mapping a stick figure down in the book there. Is the REM pod still on? Still on, yeah. Strange that.
turn it round because it was normally on that one light, but then we need to turn it round the all went off. It's all very wet and damp down here. I think if it wasn't a northerly wind and it was a southerly, it'd be very misty down here. But like I say, it's not actually, it's not spooky, which is the weird thing. Where it is, it should be, but perhaps it's because of the monks. There was a lot of love and a lot of faith it was uh, soaked into the earth here and there is nothing dark or menacing here at all. That's a little bug flying around. All right, following a, we, we swept inside the remains of the chapel outside into the woods but it's just this area and this area only that we are having activity um the rem pod's now gone quiet the sls um sorry the emf is sort of keeps beeping and then goes quiet Now I've purposely put it in the tree so there's none of us are holding it or got anything close to it. And it's just something that's setting it off and it's just in this area. Well, don't break it. Now the REM pod's quiet, EMF's gone quiet. Hmm. Where's that, sorry? It's behind the back, look. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know, this is it is a little bit bizarre. Like we're not getting any, you know, serious activity. But something's going on with that EMF meter, something's going on with the REM pod. Well, the REM pod's now been moved to there, from there, and that is now quiet. EMF has gone quiet. But it's just this particular branch here which has got the gifts hanging from them. So it's just one branch. There's my EMF. There's the stone. There's the necklace. And ooh, there's the butterfly.
no one's near the EMF meter and yet it's like a constant source of energy going through it at the moment and now it's gone hmm Touch this device. Well, we've uh, concluded our investigation into St. Luke's Chapel, and we all feel very peaceful about the place. It's not spooky. Yes, we have had some interesting readings on the EMF and REM pod, but there's nothing, yeah, we nothing scary, nothing sinister. We discussed the fact, would you actually sleep out here at night? And then we said, yeah. Um, so all we can say is it's as beautiful at night as it is in the day. And we don't think that there's anything untoward the uh, the people that are buried here are at rest the monks that used to live here don't appear to have any malice they must have enjoyed their time here so St Luke's Chapel first investigation ticked off the list and we reckon that it's just a lovely place to visit and I hope you enjoyed it and uh Next investigation, Knowlton Church.